hundreds of sensors on thousands of cars create millions of data points every day. Data from connected vehicles is expected to exceed 10 exabytes per month by 2025. Connected vehicle services need a plan for the future as capturing, storing, querying, and analyzing this data in real time is no small feat. So we scaled the problem down to help you scale up. I'm Billy Jacobson. And I'm Brad Myro. And we are senior developer advocates focused on data and analytics for Google Cloud. Our jobs are to try the latest technologies we're offering and ensure that you, as developers, have the resources to use them with ease. In this video, we're going to race toy cars and collect some data. Then we'll talk about the decisions for choosing our tech stack, dealing with data pipelines at scale, and using the latest AI tools. We assembled a racetrack with sensors placed throughout. As the cars race, we write the sensor data and display it in a leaderboard powered by our scalable operational database, Bigtable. To perform broad analytics and use the latest machine learning technology, including Gemini for predictions on our data, we can access our Bigtable data with powerful analytics tools like Spark and BigQuery. We were inspired by the emerging field of vehicle telemetry and thought the best way to learn about it would be to build it ourselves. We'll share our lessons building this and tips to bring to full-scale vehicle telemetry, IoT, or time series use cases to fully unlock the potential of your data. To get our vehicle data, we assembled multiple toy car tracks together. Here, we have two similar tracks, so cars can race at the same time. At the start of the race is an RFID scanner. Once a racer has selected their car, they can scan its RFID sticker to register it for a race. At various checkpoints, there are beam brake sensors, so we can calculate the car's position and speed throughout the race. Now, all of these sensors are connected to a Raspberry Pi, which does some minimal processing and then writes the data to our big table database. Racers can follow along with the race in real time with a website we deployed to Cloud Run. Here, Bigtable, a NoSQL database service, acts as the operational database. The backend on Cloud Run will query for the current race statistics, and then they'll be returned with low latency for the display. In larger systems, there might be thousands of cars on the road and hundreds of sensor points. Bigtable's capabilities to handle high throughput and low latency queries enable real-time access for whatever scale you need. We wanted our data to be available for hybrid transactional and analytical processes, commonly referred to as HTAP. One way to do full-scale analytics with Bigtable is using Apache Spark, an open source framework for data processing at scale. The newly released Spark Bigtable connector enables loading Bigtable data directly into a Spark data frame. We set up a notebook to run our analytical queries using a Dataproc serverless Spark session. Spark provides a SQL layer to the NoSQL table in Bigtable. This enables us to do aggregate queries like getting the average speed of each car, average race time of each car, or determine which car is the fastest or slowest overall. Spark is tightly integrated with Python Pandas library for extended functionality such as graphing the data. Another popular Python library is the LangChain framework. It's an open source tool that allows us to use large language models or LLMs within our Python scripts. We can import the Google Gemini model and then create a Spark LangChain agent that pairs Gemini and our data frame together. This unlocks natural language querying of our data. We can ask Gemini questions rather than having to query the data with SQL. Here, I'm asking which car had the most races. And it even shows its work, so it's a really useful tool for prototyping and processing data. Another data processing solution is BigQuery, Google Cloud's data warehouse. We can start exploring our data with Spark, then transform and write the cleaned up data to BigQuery for further insights, including creating Looker dashboards. If we're getting new data daily, we can schedule recurring jobs using an orchestration tool such as Cloud Composer. These cars have been flying off the track today. Oh, they, they sure have. 
So tell me, Billy, you're a database expert. Why are we using Bigtable here? For this project, I was inspired by a vehicle manufacturer offering services for their fleets. These fleets can range from a few cars in a local business to thousands of trucks doing cross-country shipping, and each car could produce dozens of data points every second. So this is a pretty large-scale problem. There are solutions that would allow them to capture this data and analyze it later. With Bigtable, they're able to use the data in real time. Fleet managers get real-time dashboards, AI failure predictions, and can set up alerts for key data points. There are so many new car models and sensors coming out regularly, so using a NoSQL database with a flexible schema makes it easy to handle the new types of data. When they get more fleet customers, Bigtable scales horizontally so they can just add more nodes and have more throughput. Now, a Bigtable instance with just one node can handle reading or writing about 14,000 rows per second. I think our racetrack produces maybe about two to three rows per second, so we could definitely use a lot more cars and sensors to use Bigtable to its fullest extent. Okay, so you're saying I should order more cars? On it. All right, Brad. <laughs> and you tell me, we're analyzing this data with Spark and BigQuery. Can you tell me a little bit about each of these and when you'd use one versus the other? A lot of it is based on personal preference or based on the infrastructure you're already using. It can be similar to choosing between programming languages. Start with the one you know, and when you run into a limitation, see if another option works better. Some users also prefer Spark because it's open source, while others prefer doing their analyses using BigQuery's native functionality. In the end, you really can't go wrong. OK, that makes a lot of sense. Since this is a Making with AI series, what kinds of ML and AI can we integrate with these analytics tools? As we showed earlier, we can continue using LangChain to build an AI agent on top of our data. We can also build a model to predict racetrack and sensor failures, given trends in how long races are taking over time, or how long it takes for a sensor to fail on average. Another interesting use case would be to replace the RFID scanner with a computer vision model that can automatically detect which car is on the track. All right, Billy, one last question. All of this is really cool for cars, but how can we apply this technology to other industries? Any large-scale time series data can be a great fit for Bigtable. One industrial hardware company is using the Internet of Things to improve their factories. They use device telemetry data for machine learning and get real-time visibility into manufacturing lines with low latency reads. A US sports league tracks the ball and players. They have high-resolution cameras around the stadium and can capture movements at 30 frames per second in Bigtable. That data can be served in real time to consumers, and later, analysts can join the day's game with years of historical data using BigQuery and Dataflow for additional insights. And a smart thermostat company stores telemetry data. Their customers can adjust and visualize their HVAC performance from an application with Bigtable as their core database powering the backend. Bigtable really opens the door for what you can do with your data. Thank you so much for tuning in and learning about our newfound passion for race cars. In the video description, we'll link to the resources we mentioned in this video and the code we use to analyze this data. Thanks for watching. Bye.